morning guys welcome back to the farm today we're going to talk about something that might be a little bit controversial but i think it needs to be said and i think it needs to be brought to attention we have things going on in the world and everybody is scared and i i understand that personally i'm not scared but you know a lot of people are really, really scared. What are they gonna do? However, we're not gonna talk about that part. We're gonna talk about the things we can do. Get that can't word out of there. There are things you can do to make this situation better. Look at what, well, I'll tell you how I did it. I looked at our pantry. I looked at what I can, how much do I can, what do I stock in my freezers? What do I stock in my uh, long-term storage? What do I stock in my short-term storage? What do I buy in a grocery store? What I don't buy in a grocery store? And, you know, I'm trying to take this negative situation, especially for my family, because I don't feel that everyone needs to be like for my family, I don't want them stressed out. We have enough going on. We don't need this added stress. So I'm just saying, let's let's turn this around. Let's make this a positive thing. And I'd love to hear your comments. And let's talk about it. Because people are freaking out. And why are they freaking out? because they haven't taken the time to sit down and have a conversation with either their spouse, spouse or even themselves and plan for the future. It doesn't mean that, you know, next, next year there's gonna be a, a world issue. That, I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I have no clue. But what I can do is ensure that my family and my extended family are gonna be just fine. So let's talk about some of the things you can do. Something that when I was a single mom and I, I was paying a lot of rent, uh, very high daycare bills, um, for Christmas, my parents would do care packages for me. Now we're, my, my family was very small, okay? So, but this is what I wanted for Christmas was care packages. A lot of times my parents would get me like a $50 gift card to the local gro grocery store so I could buy milk for the month of December and January. And I didn't have to worry about saving that $100 from my paychecks because I worked two, two jobs to do all this. And mom and dad would go and get me $50, sometimes 100 depending on what their budget was. And they would do these gift baskets for me. So dad would start in like September and when things would go on sale, dad would pick them up because dad was the grocery shopper. As my husband chokes to death in the living room. <laughs> so anywho, um, like he would pick up things like canned beans, um, which Cody wouldn't eat, but I would eat. Um, he would buy things that like canned food, like canned tomatoes, spaghetti sauces, pastas, things like that, and put them in like a big box. And that's what I would open on Christmas Day. Are Christmas presents great? Yeah. Would I rather feed feed my family? Yes. So, and since my birthday's in December as well, they would do um, usually the gift card for my birthday. So, sorry guys. So, you know, he would do instant coffee, cough, cans of coffee. Like, it, it would just be a range of things. But it would be enough meals for me to feed Cody and I for, like, two months. And that was fantastic for me. I was more than happy with that. And Mom would get me a pair of socks or whatever. Do your parents have a house if you live in an apartment? Like I did. I had a small garden at my mom and dad's. And... I planted vegetables. I didn't can at the time, but I did do um, freezing. So I would grow beans. Mom and dad would eat the beans and the lettuces and whatever, and I would eat those. But I maintained the garden, and for use of that little plot of land in their backyard, I cut their lawn. 
So it was always give and take. So, you know, you have a balcony, put some pots out there. Is it going to help you right now? No. But is it a future thing? Yes. And that is what I'm trying to get across. There are things you can do to not have this media fear mongering situation because that's what a lot of it is. Um, and there's really no need. For instance, to stock our pantry right now in this day and time, Michael and I have not had cable internet or satellite internet in probably three years. So instead of spending that $200 on cable, we don't, we, we use that money to, to stock up our pantry. Um, Michael and I have prepaid cell phones. They're $30 a month. If we don't want to spend the $30, we don't use it. Those are the things that we do to cut our household costs down. So if say jars go on sale, I can afford to buy those jars. <coughs> Is meat on sale? And say we haven't butchered a cow yet, I can go to the grocery store and buy it. So that's kind of what we do. And I really want to make this a positive thing. I really, really do. I think there's a lot of people out there that have amazing ideas. And I want to hear those ideas. Because I might be able to take something from you and apply it to my household. But I am going to talk about my canning plan for 2020. How I'm going to tackle it. And... Uh, We've made a lot of changes. I had to, re, to redo this because with what happened, I think it's really important that everybody pick up even a water bath canner and do tomatoes or, you know, some fruits, um, anything like that. Shove it under a bed. If you have to, shove it under a bed because you don't know when you're going to need that food. So I'm going to pause you for a moment, spin you around, and we're going to talk about this canning plan and how we're going to tackle this this year because it's going to be a little bit different this year. So let's get on that. Okay, guys. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make sure you guys can see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up my canning this year. So if you're a canner you know how overwhelming things can be, okay? So I, I don't even need to explain that to you. But for anyone that's new to canning, I'm just going to take a brief second and talk about it. So when you're new to canning, you want to do everything. However, when you become a more realistic canner, you know that you can't do everything. You can, you just... It needs to take a little more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up my canning to spring and summer. Okay. Because here in Ontario, our tomatoes, canning usually starts for tomatoes about August. So, yeah, like maybe the end of July, beginning of, yeah, it's just, it depends on the weather. Okay. So I don't have any totals here. If you notice, there's no totals here. I'm going to do as much as I can and as much we're hoping to have grow our own this year. But if not, as much as I can afford. We do have a $1,000 budget for my canning. So if I need to, I will use that. I would rather grow it myself than go somewhere else. But let's be realistic. I only have so much time in a day. So we're going to do some Rotel this year. I want to do, I've wanted to do this video for you guys forever. And it's how I do my tomatoes on the barbecue for canning. Um, tomatoes and the pasta sauce. I think you guys might really enjoy that. Um, just regular tomato sauce, whole tomatoes, herb tomatoes, and crushed tomatoes. Why, why don't I just do one of these? Because there's meals that I make that I don't want crushed tomatoes. There's meals that I make that I don't want, um, you know, just whole, like, I just have so many different meals. I am an ingredient canner. I want to be able to go to my shelf, pull that off, and use that one thing. Um, Mike's chili sauce. Um, this is going to be a spicy chili sauce. Um, 
I do have videos for chili sauce, but it's a sweet chili sauce. And then, of course, my mom's chili sauce, barbecue sauce, that's a given. But when I'm waiting for tomatoes, I'm going to work on potatoes, yellow beans, and green beans. And the other thing I'm going to add this year, and I'm going to get them when I can uh, get them on sale, is I'm going to can some frozen peas, some frozen corn. The reason for that is that's going to become my long-term storage, not my short-term. Okay, because um, I freeze corn. I just, corn in the cob, I just throw it, throw it in the freezer. So I don't need to worry about that. But potatoes, I'm going to do wedges, chunks, and fries this year. And um, so I'm going to work on this stuff as I'm waiting for this. So that's part of that. Relishes and jams and pickles. I am the only one that eats jam. So I do like eight jars of strawberry jam. I don't even go to a farmer's market. I just buy frozen strawberries. If you want me to be 100%. I don't even, I don't even do that. But, um, so I'm going to do sweet relish, dill relish, sweet onion jam, bacon onion jam, dill pickles, dilly beans, pickled beets, sandwich pickles, and sweet pickles. And the only jam I'm probably going to end up making this year is my Grandma Rose peach orange mar marmalade. So while I'm waiting for all this, you see I have a meat, hopefully you guys can see that, a meat here. It says hamburger, sausage, ground chicken, ground pork, uh, ground turkey, roast beef, and chicken. Um, I might add some fish to that. We'll see. <coughs> So while I'm waiting for all this, I'm going to start, I'm going to take a bag and put it in my freezer and I'm going to start stocking that. So um, if we end up getting a full cow, I will have all, I will have the hamburger and the roast beef already in my house, right? But I want to section that off so I don't eat that because that is for my canning. So I put a big bag in my freezer and then I start loading up that freezer. Um, chicken breast, if I find chicken breasts on sale which is very rare here um, I'll buy it in bulk put it in that bag and then that way I know I have it so fall and winter I'm going to take the fall and the winter and I'm going to do my beans all different kinds of beans Mexican black beans plain black beans, pinto beans, tomato beans um hot pepper beans, maple beans, and kidney beans, okay? And then I'm gonna do my meats in the winter, okay? And I'm gonna do all my stocks and soup in the fall and the winter. That's what this line here is, fall and winter canning 2020, okay? And then I'm gonna do my soups, okay? So over here, I have, this is just random. Um, it's a dehydrating list. So, and then my freezing list is here, which it, it'll be added, add to. Uh, pie filling, I need to do apple, cherry, and mixed berry this year because I'm out of all three of those. <coughs> A little bit of ra rebel canning over here. Uh, I'm going to do milk, butter, um, olive, olive oil, packed garlic, and lemon curd. That's my rebel canning list for this year. The milk simply because if we get snowed in, which is a very big possibility up in the Northern Ontario, um, and we can't get out, and we don't have any fresh milk, we don't have a, we're not doing a dairy cow, so I need to have that on hand. I will have that, and I will link um, Michelle from All Sorts. Her video, she's the one I'm following. I trust her methods, I trust her, so, uh, milk and butter, I'm going to link her videos down, down below. Dehydrating, we're going to do peppers, onions, garlic, rosemary, parsley, all my herbs. Thai basil, sweet basil, mar marjoram, summer savory, winter savory, thyme, oregano, carrots, and frozen veggie mix. Because I'm going to take this frozen veggie mix, I'm going to grind it up and put it in some chicken broth, like the bouillon the MS free the bouillon and I'm gonna make make my own kind of thing going on there but 
that's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to tackle this this year. Freezing is just going to be asparagus, carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, peppers, and onions. The cabbage is for cabbage rolls. Um, Michael and I, Cody will eat cabbage rolls. He's not a huge fan of them, but he will eat them. Um, and I actually do the whole thing, and then I just freeze the, the cabbage. And then I just pull out the bag, and the leaves are ready to go. And if you guys want to see any of that, you let me know. But that's kind of my plan. It will, more, more things are going to pop up. I mean, this is just my basic idea for right now. But like I said, guys, there, there are ways to stock your house. So you, you don't need to worry. Um, I will, my next video after Frugal Friday will be our long-term storage. What is our plan? How are we going to do it? How are we going to afford to do it? And I think these are the things we need to be talking about, not, not chaos. And let's empower each other to come up with some really good ideas to get this stuff out there. Everybody has a plan. Everybody has a way of doing things. And I want to hear those things. If you want to um, do a video response to this, go for it. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, let's form together a community. Let's figure out how to help each other and move forward from this. Because yes, this is a tragedy. I, I will wholeheartedly agree with you. But out of tragedy comes positivity. So let's be positive. Let's talk about it. Um, I will not put up with any you know, bashing on the comments. I will not put up with that. But let's let's talk about how we can help each other get through this horrible time and move forward. So I want to thank you guys for hearing me out today, having my back, and if you have ideas on what someone can do that doesn't have the ability to do this, how do you do it? If you live in an apartment and don't have a way to grow a garden somewhere else or use a community, here in Ontario we have uh, community gardens. So I don't know what your area is like. How do you do it? What, you know, how do you build that little pantry in your little tiny apartment? Because I know I shove food under beds and, and, um, yeah, I had it everywhere. But, it is doable and that's what I want to make very clear you know but anyways I want to know what you guys want to hear here and I want to know what you guys think and thank you so much guys for hanging out with me today and I hope you're all safe and you guys are all well fed and I'm thinking of you all and I'm praying for all you guys and let's let's make this a positive thing instead of a negative all right, guys, I hope to talk to you guys down in the comments below. I'm going to make sure my laptop is up and charged because I'm infamous for not charging my laptop. And uh, let's talk about this. And I'm excited to see what you guys think. All right, guys, I will talk to you guys super soon. Bye.